MDM4U 3.2 linear regressions. So previously we have learned how to do a correlational study between two variables to determine whether or not there is a predictable change in one variable if there's a change in another. Regression, however, is trying to fit a model to data. So for example, if we have a scatter plot like you see here on the right, this line is a pretty good estimate for the trend of the data in the set. And we will investigate linear regressions to start, but there's a variety of different models that we can use. So regression, an analytic technique for determining the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. Interpolation, an estimate between data points in the set. If we were to use this formula for the line of best fit, and we were to make a prediction within the data set. So if we look at the X axis, this is our minimum value. This is our maximum value for the X. If we have a prediction inside of this frame, the minimum and maximum, that's interpolation. And it's often more reliable because it's closer to most of the data set. Now I'm saying closer to most of the data set because if we were to use an estimate outside of our min and max. So say we were to extend past this maximum value on this line, and make a prediction for X outside of this um, range, then we would have extrapolation. So we want to be able to develop models to predict values. However, the further we are from our existing data, the less reliable. Okay, a residual. A residual is the vertical deviation of each point from the line of best fit. So if you look at this line of best fit in this point, the DV, uh, sorry, the residual is this vertical distance. This will be a helpful quantifiable measure for the distance of a point from the line. Outlier. Points in a set of data that are significantly far from the majority of other data. So we don't quite have an outlier in this data set. This one is the furthest, but we're talking about significantly far from the majority of the data. They can often skew the results or affect our model in a drastic way. So the least squares method, given its name, because if we look at these residuals and square them, we're trying to minimize the area in each of those squares. And the closer that the data is to the model, the better the, uh, the fit. So the least squares fit method provides a calculation for the line of best fit. The sum of the residuals is zero. The positive and negative residuals cancel out. Notice there's some that are above and some points that are below that line of best fit. So again, we need to use that square to attribute value to both positive and negative um, residuals squared. So this is our formula for our line of best fit. This looks familiar. Y is equal to MX plus B. The only difference is this is A and this is B. So this is similar to the technique that we previously learned with correlational studies. The only thing that you might need to recall is that Y bar means the average of Y, X bar means the average of X. So this is the A within this formula, and this is the B within this formula as well. And y is equal to mx plus B. So applying the least squares formula, what we need to do is if we have our data set, you'll always be given this formula. This is a lot to memorize, um, and there's investigations in the textbook, which you go further to understand its development. But what you would want to do is look at which values are necessary within this formula. We need to have the following inputs. We need an x squared. So we'll take the x squared of each of these. So 33 squared, 1089. As well as we need the product of x and y. We see this here. n represents the number of data points. And remember, this is an ordered pair. So there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 is the value of n. x times y, 33 times 33 is 1089. So when we get 
all of these values. And yes, it is tedious, and I will show you a more sophisticated way to be able to approach this, but this is an expectation to be able to calculate it by hand. The sum of x, this is representing the sum of each of these columns because that is going to be needed in our formula. So this is a good strategy for the way of um, substitution, starting off with a, substituting in our values and be very careful the sum of x squared, these look very similar. The sum of x squared minus the sum of x in brackets squared. Well, this is the sum of x, which is this number, our x squared. And this value here is the sum of x values squared. So each x value is squared and then added together. That's a different value. Okay, so the sum of x, take the, sorry, x bar is the sum of x, 292, over the number of data values, similarly for y. And once you have your a value and your b value, then you can express your line of best fit. Now, something that we can do with technology, copy, control, c, let's start a new sheet. If I press control v or paste the data here, wait, gotta get in the window. Okay, so this is Microsoft Excel spreadsheet software. And what I can do is quickly click and drag over, highlight that area, insert, and what I can do is look at the graphs. And since this is a set of ordered pairs, we learned that that's best for a scatter plot. So we have our data here. We can click on the data, uh, sorry, the points, right click, add a trend line. So we have many options for ones that we'll see in the future. But this is linear. And I'm going to have to move here to see the following. Display equation on chart. Display R squared value on chart. So the co, let me zoom in here. We have all we need. We can verify our answers using Microsoft Excel. We also get something called the coefficient of determination. Now we saw the correlation coefficient R and R squared is a helpful tool in general for any model that we use to describe the strength of a relationship or the, the, the wellness of a model to fit the data.